fellow Falcoholics. What is up? Welcome to the Falcoholic Podcast Falcons film review for week four of the 2022 NFL season. I'm your host, Kevin Knight at Falcoholic Kevin. I know uh, these are coming later. Blame NFL Plus for taking forever to put the uh, all 22 up, but um, at least you can see uh, some some early clips on my uh, Twitter if you're following there. Alcoholic Kevin, uh, because I still have to watch the game and then just pick out the plays I want to go clip later. Um, so you can check out a lot of stuff early, like on Monday and, and early on Tuesday there while I'm putting this video together. But there will be all 22 clips for this actual video. Um, some of the same plays will be mentioned. Obviously, this was a uh, significant win for the Falcons against the Browns here in week four, 23 to 20. Uh, Browns obviously reeling from a set of defensive line front seven injuries uh so not a full strength unit no miles garrett in here jadavian Clowney has been out for several weeks so this was a vulnerable browns front that the falcons needed to take advantage of uh and get a win here because this this is a very difficult three game stretch coming over the next few weeks like i've talked about on the shows right we've got the bucks this week then we've got the 49ers who have the nfl's number one defense right now and then we have the possibly recovering uh cincinnati bengals who've sort of started to get it together uh and could very well be firing on all cylinders t- by the time the falcons get there in week seven so uh atlanta needed to find a way to get a win here in cleveland getting to two and two is a big deal uh for those of you that are confident in this team's chance of making the playoffs and look i think those of you that are pushing that that narrative that positive optimistic narrative you know you're appreciated I think that uh what you've seen so far is that this team looks like they may have the the juice to be competitive to be frisky at least and maybe depending on how the ball breaks in some of these close games could potentially have a shot uh in the NFC as it's currently looking you know this conference looks pretty weak right now there's not really a lot of other clear-cut playoff teams outside of the Eagles um, you know, maybe the 49ers because of that defense. Uh, but other than that, everyone looks pretty vulnerable right now. So, uh, if you're hoping for the Falcons to possibly make noise this year, this was a, a crucial step because going into this three game stretch with a losing record would have been really, really bad, uh, and a lot harder to climb out of now at two and two, they could technically afford to lose all three of these games and still, have a chance in the next stretch, which is like a six to seven game, pretty easy group before the bye, uh, where they could even drop these three games and still come out with uh, a winning record. Um, and and that's more than I think a lot of us would have expected going in. They've certainly played hard every single week, and this week was no different. Um, and the the crux of today's review uh I think the the team has earned. I think they've talked about doing this for a long time, and I think they finally really demonstrated today against Cleveland, um, a team who is sort of known for their trench play. Uh, the Falcons out Browns. The Browns, uh, in terms of trench play today, the Falcons found a way to win up front against a difficult opponent to do so, both on offense and defense. Obviously, the defense struggled. Uh through parts of this game, only allowed 20 points, not the end of the world. That's certainly keeping it close enough that this offense should be able to put up enough points to beat a depleted Browns defense. The running game of Atlanta uh, was really the key to coming away with the victory here, whereas the passing game struggled a lot. This was by far Marcus Mariota's worst game, um, which, you know, to his credit, I think Mariota played two good games, maybe one even very good game early in the season. Wasn't as sharp last week, but it was a lower passing volume game. And then this week, uh, a lot of issues, not all necessarily on Mariota. There was a bad snap that was not his fault. There was a bad snap that was his fault. Um, I'm not blaming him for the first one. That was way too high by Drew Dahlman. Um, I think there were several times where we could have seen the officials throw defensive pass interference or holding. I counted, I think, three plays where I think the flags probably were justified. You're not always going to get those calls. Um, You know, I I think those throws certainly aren't on Mariota. Um, I actually don't think the interception to Denzel Ward is on Mariota. I mean, maybe he could have placed that ball a little bit further out in front of Drake London, but that uh, that was just a great play by Denzel Ward, not Mariota's fault. Um, But I think as a whole, this was Mariota's weakest day as a passer. I think that uh, he was off target on several throws. And that's just not going to cut it. Um, 
when you have this low of passing volume, you really can't afford to miss when you do throw the ball. Um, and again, the, the deep passing game does seem to be sort of the weakest part of the offense right now. I think we've seen over the last few weeks that Arthur Smith wants to chuck it deep off of play action, especially when they're running the ball this successfully. And I don't know if that's something they'll be able to do with Mariota long-term or not. Um, again, I know some people are already calling for Desmond Ritter after this game. It's not going to happen. Um, it's not It's not yet. Like, I mean, it, I think we all believe that Ritter will probably see the field at some point this season. I don't think one bad game against the Browns is going to get that like started. Um, but like I said, uh, Mariota has a tough three game stretch coming up in terms of the defenses they will play, especially these first two. Um, he's going to have an opportunity to bounce back, hold and, and really put the clamps on the starting job. But this was a weaker performance from him. Um, I do definitely want to shout out and there will be a play in the film review that we'll get to in just a second here. Um, Mariota's obviously talented as an athlete. He hasn't necessarily been involved as a runner as much over the past few weeks, but his ability to like navigate chaotic plays and sort of keep these bad plays from becoming like catastrophic sacks or losses or or anything like that, that is underrated. I think he's actually really thrived um, in some very bad situations uh, with some of these bad snaps. Like in this game, he gets the bad snap, obviously doesn't turn it into a positive play in, in a you know crucial red zone situation, but does get that pass off, get the ball out of there and avoid the sack to keep that drive alive. Um, so it's sort of like, I, I just want to give him credit for those plays. I think, I think that's an underrated thing. Cause it doesn't always result in like a flashy outcome though. We have seen that happen sometimes and we did see it happen certainly on the play. We're going to break down of Mariota's in this game, but, um, you kind of have to, I think we all have to live with the fact that Mariota might be just a somewhat limited passer. He's not going to necessarily unlock the passing game to the extent that uh, this coaching staff might want, but he does offer a lot of things that help an offense, his athleticism, his, you know, play under pressure, under in, in chaotic situations where he can sort of avoid big mistakes there. If he cuts down on the turnovers, I think if the turnovers weren't happening, I think we'd all have a much rosier view, but because there's been a couple of those crucial turnovers, there's only been four games so far, so things could change. It, it sort of sours the whole picture. Um, so, it's too early to say like, oh yeah, he can't cut it. You know, we need to go to Ritter, but uh, Ritter is lurking. You know, we 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 knew that was something that was probably going to happen at some point. Mariota is going to have a chance here to certainly put the clamps on the job by playing well against a very difficult stretch. But um, you know, can't have any more games like today um, where the offense through the air was just so limited that they literally had to just go to the ground in the second half. Now it worked, thankfully. Uh, but I don't think I've ever seen the Falcons running game have this much success in a half. Um, and I don't know how uh, like easy that will be to replicate, I guess we'll say. But I clearly this team is good at running the football. We're going to take a look at why in this video. Winning up front is the theme of this film review. We're going to look at, uh, shout out the offensive line, shout out the defensive line in some crucial situations as well against a very, very good, if not maybe the best offensive line uh, in the NFL in the Cleveland Browns. So, Let's get to it, guys. Let's break down some of the most interesting plays from the Falcons in week four. All right, guys. Now we're going to see the first play we're going to break down today. This is in the red zone on the very first drive. First quarter, 11-17 to go. Cleveland Browns have third and goal here uh, with a chance to actually get a first down prior to the goal line. Uh, if I remember correctly. So this is an absolutely crucial play for the defense. Um, and we're just going to see a really great job here by Richie Grant, the safety at the bottom of your screen. Rash uh, Rashawn Evans is going to read this correctly as well. Um, and those two, uh, Grant's going to be the one to make first contact. Rashawn, uh, Rashawn Evans is going to clean this up. And just a very sound play by the defense, sort of winning up front here. And what I mean by that is we're going to actually see the handoff and Nick Chubb going to come this direction um and he's going to have a choice right to take that outside or to take it through a gap here and because of the penetration from Taquan Graham and Grady Jarrett doing a good job of getting in the way as well this gap here uh you know they're going to try to run it I, I'm getting my names mixed up here but they're going to try to run it basically in this area I can't remember exactly which gap it is based on where these guys move around um but they're going to run it. He has a choice to run it here. And I think 
that was probably where he might have wanted to go, you know, quicker. Uh, doesn't risk someone chasing him down. But he does have to bounce this outside because of the penetration by Taquan Graham. Um, and that gives Richie Grant an opportunity to really track this ball down and knife into the backfield and get the tackle. And Rashawn Evans is there to help him out as well. So let's watch this play here at full speed. Going to see the, t- the penetration there from Graham. It's a subtle thing. And then you see Richie Grant just fly in there to make that stop. Um, like I said, it's a subtle thing from Graham, right? Right off the snap, he's going to get in here and they're going to clog up right where... Because this is, this is what I'm talking about here. You got the outside option or you can shoot it inside here. Um, and right... At this time, it looks like, oh, there maybe there's a chance, but Graham is going to keep filling this. Grady Jarrett's going to get in the way too, and there's just not a lot of space to get through there. It would have been really easy for one of these guys to come and trip this up. So Chubb thinks he's got a chance on the outside, but as we're going to see, Richie Grant, too quick, um, goes right in here to make the tackle. Rashawn Evans right behind him, and that is a red zone stop for the Falcons. They would get the uh, stop on 4th and 3 on the very next play, which would prevent the Browns from getting any points to open the game. Uh, Just a crucial play in the the outcome of the game, especially because the Falcons only ended up winning this by 3. So, uh, terrific play there by Grant. Good job up front limiting the options for Chubb. And, uh, yeah, red zone stop. All right, guys, this is going to be one of those clutch Marcus Mariota plays that I talked about here in an absolutely crucial third down situation. Uh, Marcus Mariota is going to find a way under immense pressure here to get this ball just enough on it for Alameda Zacchaeus to make a terrific catch to keep this scoring drive alive. Uh, Alameda Zacchaeus up here working out of the slot. We've got Drake London on the outside and Kyle Pitts on the other side. Um, and to, uh, Zacchaeus's credit, he's going to create a lot of separation on the defender here with his route, just coming in here. Uh, and he's going to have an opportunity to make this catch. It's a difficult low catch, but as you're going to see, Marcus Mariota is going to get, uh, a ton of pressure right in his face, uh, and be hit as he throws this ball. Um, he's able to get just enough on it for Zacchaeus to make the catch and for the Falcons to get. A first down here in a spot where they absolutely needed it. Marcus Mariota back to pass. Pressure right in his face and delivers it right on target uh, to, you know, right on target, right? Uh, you know, it's low, but Zacchaeus is able to make a play on the ball, have an opportunity here. Um, difficult play, of course, but I don't blame Mariota for the throw because, like I said, he's got a dude right on top of him. Uh, like, this dude is is literal feet from his face. Uh, when he's about to unload this ball. So that's terrific pocket presence there from Mariota, a fearlessness to just withstand that hit, unload that ball, get just enough on it for a crucial third down pickup here. Uh, and that that's what I'm talking about when I talk about Mariota's ability to sort of make these sort of clutch plays in chaos. Um, and as you guys have seen with the Falcons offensive line, as a run blocking unit, extremely good. As a pass blocking unit, not bad, but not always great, uh, you know, susceptible to some issues here and there. Uh, but Mariota has been able to elude a lot of those issues so far and make plays when he has. So a uh, good play there from Marcus Mariota to keep that drive going. All right, guys, next play we're going to take a look at. This is Tyler Algiers catch and run, a uh, big play. They got the Falcons inside the red zone here. Uh, just one of my favorite play designs, I think, from Arthur Smith today. Uh, this is a really clever little play here. Uh, the Falcons have Drake London and Kyle Pitts at the bottom of your screen. And Tyler Algier, the rookie running back, in the backfield with Marcus Mariota in the shotgun. Now the Falcons know, of course, that Drake London and Kyle Pitts are going to demand a lot of attention from the opposing team. Um, and the way they actually run these routes is going to open up an enormous amount of space for Tyler Algier to catch this pass. So we're going to see, uh, you know, I'm going to draw approximately where these routes are going to go guys. Uh, but sort of these inside routes here, um, and they're going to occupy these defenders that are in tight coverage here as well, right? These guys are going to have to chase these guys and follow them over here. Then we're going to see 
those routes basically function as quasi blocks. They're going to clear out all this space for Tyler Algier. Um, and then these guys are actually going to hook around and come back and become blockers on this play. Uh, luckily they don't need to do a whole lot, right? Their, their routes sort of do most of the work and Tyler Algier is just going to run out here, catch an easy dump off pass and take this for a big gain, show off his yards after contact. Uh, so let's see this play in motion. You guys will see what I'm talking about here. So you got the fake here. You see those guys run those inside routes. Tyler Algiers wide open, tons of space. Drake London actually able to sort of convert the route into a block. Kyle Pitts, the way he runs it, actually trips up his defender. So um, you could see how much attention that the Browns are giving to Kyle Pitts and Drake London, right? Both the safeties are, are looking at those guys. No one's looking at Tyler Algier, who is completely open. I mean, look at this space. You see these routes, like I said, they just clear out all that space. Then you're actually going to see those guys sort of block, quasi-block these guys, right? By the way they run these, Pitts is going to whip around and lose his man. Drake London's going to go out here and sort of beat his guy back to the block, almost sort of walling him off with the way he runs. Uh, Algier's just going to catch an easy pass, and boom. Big gain. Really, really nice play design. Um, this is the type of stuff that I want, that I thought we would start seeing from Arthur Smith, the type of stuff that he would do in Tennessee. Just really clever route running, taking advantage of the defense, really selling out to stop your top threats, and just eating up those easy yards. Uh, and of course, Algier with a very nice catch and some nice moves, uh, some nice physical running after the catch to pick up a big gain, get the Falcons inside the 10 on that play. All right, guys. Next play we're going to take a look at. Cordero Patterson's touchdown. Uh, love this play. Terrific play by Patterson. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to be missing Patterson's great plays over the next four games, at least, as he's uh, been put on IR. This was sort of his last uh, excellent run of the day where he looked fully healthy to me, so he must have tweaked it at some point later in the game. Um, and this is just a really nice decision from Patterson where he just sort of says, look, I'm just more athletic than everybody else. Uh, and that's how we're going to do this thing. Um, so this play is actually designed to go to the right. Um, you're going to see a lot of blocks, uh, go to the right, including like Drake London going down and blocking his man. Um, and I think actually there's a chance that he could have had something to the right, you know, like a, like a, at least a five yard gain because the offensive line does a good job. But what, what Patterson sees is as soon as the, the defense sees, you know, all these blocks start to go to the right, they start to sort of cheat over that direction right off the snap, right? Everybody starts going that direction, flowing to the ball, right? But Patterson is just going to be like, oh, you're telling me the only guy I have to beat is this dude, this corner? Yeah, I'm going to take my chances with that. So moves this way with the handoff, right? Stops on a dime and then cuts back and takes it all the way to the house, outrunning a uh, very athletic cornerback there of the Browns. Um, just a really incredible play showing off how special an athlete Cordero Patterson is, able to just outrun the entire Browns defense to the sideline. Um, I just love how quickly he's able to turn this around. Like, you see this right here, and this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is decently blocked. I think Patterson has a chance to hit this hole, get a decent gain. You know, I don't think it's as clear. You know, I don't, I don't think it's a touchdown, right? He, I mean, these guys certainly are going to have a chance at him. Um, I think Hodge, is, you know, has a chance to make that block too, and, and Dahlman's going to try to climb and hit his man. So, like, I think there's a chance that this, would, this was not necessarily a bad decision, and that was probably the way this was designed to go. But Patterson sees, like everyone charging this direction um and the corner is even starting to take a step over there he's responsible for containing the outside and look at how patterson is is his whole body is pointing here um to go this way to threaten this direction he just stops and comes right back around uh and it's a foot race to the end zone just a really smart play and not something that a lot of running backs can do especially running backs of his size gets just enough for the touchdown. Really impressive play by Patterson. And honestly, like, even though, like I said, that he didn't run it to the side that was blocked, good blocks by the offensive line. Like, I think they would have had 
a, a successful run play to the right side as well on that one. Uh, Patterson just sort of said, you know, I'm going to take this into my own hands, get the touchdown here and eliminate all that drama of a possible, you know, second, second down. We're just going to get the, we're just going to get the touchdown right here. So great job, Patterson. I uh, hope he comes back healthy real soon. We're going to, we're going to miss him, but we're going to uh, look at some plays here where it might be that uh, the Falcons run game, run game might be okay with these, with these other guys that they got in Tyler Algier and Caleb Huntley. All right, guys, next play we're going to take a look at here is in the uh, late third quarter. This is after Patterson has sort of temporarily gone out of the game. I like to call this drive the Huntley arrival drive, right? This is where Caleb Huntley came on the field. Falcons ran it 10 straight times for a touchdown. Uh, And a lot of that had to do with some nice running, of course, from both Caleb Huntley and Tyler Algier on this one. But really, it was the offensive line hitting some tremendous blocks, just really blowing the Browns off the line of scrimmage, executing not just the offensive line, but the Falcons are going to use pretty much every player on the field not named uh, Caleb Huntley as a blocker. And most of them are going to succeed on their blocks and make magic happen on this play. Uh, It's going to start out with sort of two double teams, or at least it appears that way, right? Um you're going to get Jake Matthews and Elijah Wilkinson on the defensive tackle three tech there. You're going to get Drew Dahlman and Chris Lindstrom on the other three tech. Uh, maybe that's even the one tech. I think he's lined up on the inside shoulder there. But um, you're going to see McGarry have to wall off the edge rusher. And <laughs> you're going to see Alameda Zakia is tasked with just getting enough of the other edge rusher to sort of make this play happen. And to his credit, he does. You're going to see Drake London run out here. Or excuse me, uh, that's Kaderil Hodge. Uh, he's going to run out here and make a block. Drake London's going to go down here and make a really good block. Uh, Parker Hesse is going to come in here and clear out a linebacker. So, and and you're going to see that it's not over for any of these guys either. There are more blocks that are going to develop as this run happens. Caleb Huntley is going to get this carry. Patiently wait for these blocks to develop. Avoid, crucially, this edge rusher, who's the guy that has the best chance at making this play. Uh come through the open hole, weave his way through, and just run through some guys for a big run with some tremendous yards after contact. Um, But like I said, you can see already there's a lot of blocking going on here. There's going to be more. There's going to be more. So let's fast forward a little bit. All right. So you can see these double teams taking shape here. You know, Wilkinson's really just getting a piece of his guy. Alonso Zacchaeus is trying desperately to get a piece of his guy. Just needs to get enough to keep him from making the play. Kadero Hodge moving in to try to get uh, a secondary defender. Drake Lennon's going to come down here and clear out whoever he can get his hands on. Parker Hesse already sort of functioning as the fullback, getting ready to clear out in here, right? So, so far, you know, nothing too spectacular, right? Next, next few plays. All right, now we've got all of a sudden... Jake Matthews walling off his guy. Again, Zacchaeus just trying to get enough of his guy. Drew Dahlman turning around, walling off his guy. Hesse's about to be in position. Uh, McGarry doing a great job down here. Chris Lindstrom, look at this athletic ability. He's going to come in and take out these guys. And you're actually going to see Wilkinson start running downfield for a very deep block. Uh, so just watch this develop here. These guys get just enough, right? Zacchaeus just slowed down his guy enough. Matthews gets enough of his guy without it being a hold. And that's it. Zacchaeus has passed him. They have no chance of catching up. Now all he has to do uh, is beat this guy, right? Which this guy gets a hand on him. um, But he's just going to keep pushing. And then, of course, you see Elijah Wilkinson. Look at this man. All the way. (laughs) Look at how far... He's come from the line of scrimmage, uh, making a a key block downfield to help get a couple more yards on this play. Uh, Just tremendous blocking, really nice, patient run from Huntley. Gets enough speed to avoid, but lets those blocks develop, gets in there, and it's a big run. Uh, The Falcons really established the dominance on this drive. Just pushing the Browns around, uh, hitting that many blocks, that's always going to result in a great play for you. Um, and you're really seeing like how much 
everyone on this team is expected to contribute as a run blocker. Like we saw Kadero Hodge, we saw Drake London, of course, we saw Parker Hesse, who's really, really impressed as a blocking tight end so far on this offense. And even the offensive linemen, they're having multiple assignments, right? They're like, okay, you're going to make this look like a double, then you're going to scrape off, go pick up someone downfield. You know, Lindstrom, Elijah Wilkinson, you guys are both going to go get other blocks. Uh, and both of them are successful in doing so, clearing out just enough space for Huntley to get skinny in there. Look at how close, you know, right here. This is how close this play is to to not getting out of there, right? Look at how close these guys are. But Huntley's going to get through that hole and escape, and it's a big play. Tremendous work by everyone on the Falcons offense on that play, getting that blocking done and getting a great, uh, great play, great gain. Beautifully blocked, beautifully drawn up. Uh, love it when a play comes together like that. Uh, big props to the Falcons offensive line. And, of course, Caleb Huntley for finishing that run with some extra yards after contact. All right, guys. At the end of the Huntley arrival drive, he's going to get a chance to cash this in for his first career touchdown. And, of course, he does. Once again, going to be some terrific play from the offensive line. Uh, and the Browns are all over this run play. Like, they they are playing run all the way. They're sort of selling out to stop the run. We're going to see two guys run blitz here. Um, I believe that's the safety and the linebacker here. Both going to blitz on this. Both going to try to blow this play up. And some really nice blocks are going to shut that down. Uh, McGarry's going to get a piece of his man, do a really good job of sort of sealing him off entirely. Lindstrom is going to get right in here and actually tangle up three guys with his block, uh, Dalman's going to get over the edge here and wall off his man. Um, and we're also going to see a key block here from Elijah Wilkinson. And Huntley's going to take this with a head of steam and punch it right in between those two. Uh, it's really between the center and the guard, not between him and Jake Matthews. Matthews is doing a good job out here keeping his man out of the play. But just a physical, punishing play here at the goal line. Browns blitz to stop it. Let's see how that goes for him. Here comes the blitz. Not enough. Caleb Huntley just patiently taking that, dot, jumping into the end zone, the flourish there. Um, just look at this play from Lindstrom. He sees this blitz. He's also going to try to get enough of the guy next to him that he can't knife in. McGarry doing a great job of getting over there. Uh, can see Lindstrom right here just not only taking care of the blitzer, but also impeding the other guy. These guys are going to get tangled up and fall over. That's going to help Drew Dahlman get out and wall off his man here. Like I said, with Wilkins, Elijah Wilkinson at left guard getting it. And Huntley's just going to wait for this to develop a little bit, take a few steps, and then burst in with a little flourish dive on there. And it's a touchdown for the Falcons, terrifically blocked up front. Falcons made it look easy on that play. Uh, terrific blocking once again there. Offensive line, everyone did their part. And Caleb Huntley did the rest to get that touchdown. Um, and that's part of the reason, right, that despite the Falcons losing Cordero Patterson, who's been an integral part of this rushing attack, if the offensive line can block like that, then it doesn't matter who's at running back to some extent. And then we've seen that clearly Tyler Algier and Caleb Huntley can do enough with the ball in their hands to take advantage of terrific blocking. Um, and if that's what we're going to get, the loss of Patterson might not be as catastrophic as some fear. Obviously, this rushing attack is far better with Patterson than without. They're going to miss his dynamic ability. But uh, for a couple weeks, I think we've seen, based on how the end of this game went, that these guys possibly can get it done uh, with the reserves playing well. All right, guys, here it is. Final two plays of the game for the defense. Uh, the Falcons in a dangerous spot here. The Browns just need a field goal to tie. They're already getting close to the edge of that range. They need a stop badly. Luckily, they got some help from the Browns and a nice play, of course, by Lorenzo Carter on the previous play. Uh, with a penalty, a legal man downfield. That led now to a second and long situation for Cleveland. Uh, and we're going to see that man... The man himself, Grady Jarrett, just put forth an absolute clinic here. Uh, he's going to charge in and really dominate with his hand usage here. He's going to break through the hands of Joel Batonio, the Browns left guard, one of the best in the NFL at his position, immediately burst through 
beat his hands, and he'll be on Brissette here in a moment's notice to get the sack, uh, which is a good thing uh, that the pressure comes because this receiver is going to end up open. I, I don't know if it's a coverage bust or, you know, I think the guys start, I think the secondary starts drifting down this direction when they see Brissette under pressure and rolling out, but you're going to see this guy eventually come open here. I don't think there was much of a chance for this play to happen because of the pressure, but uh, thankfully, thankfully we didn't have to find out because Grady Jarrett is going to just dominate this match, this one-on-one -on -one here. Uh, gets Just beats the hands, and he is on Brissette in a moment's notice. Um, and this is no slouch. You know, this is Joel Batonio, one of the best guards in the game. Jarrett's just better on this play. Gets in there to get the sack and bring up a... I mean, just deal a crushing blow to the Browns. Uh, this is now going to make this like a third in infinity. Brissett's going to need to pull out a miracle out of his hat. Uh, and as all you guys know who watch the game, there will be no miracles for the Browns on the next play, which we will break down right after this. All right, folks, final non-kneel down play of the game. The Browns are in third in infinity of course, they have a long way to go, and the Falcons are playing coverage like they know it, right? Uh, they have to defend the potential field goal line, which I think where they're lining up, I think, is pretty reasonable to defend uh, that sort of, of attempt. Anything past that, you know, on this side is going to be really hard field goal to make, uh, and they will take, with, with very little time left on the clock, they will take any anything that Cleveland wants to throw in here. They're going to be totally fine with that. Um and we're just going to see a terrific play in coverage from D. Alford, who the Browns picked on earlier on this drive. I think David Bell probably got off with a, a, a little bit of a, a uh, offensive pass interference on that play. Not egregious, but, you know, I think it could have been called. Uh, but this time, D. Alford gets his revenge. He will be taking this ball away. Brissett obviously having to heave up a prayer, not able to get a clean target here. Get uh, and he, and the pressure does start to come, so he has to, he has to get rid of this ball. And D. Alford is going to be the one who comes away with it and officially ends the Browns' hopes in this one. So here come the receivers. D. Alford immediately covering this route, right in position, and just jumps up to make a play. Tremendous read on the quarterback. Sees his eyes, gets right in position for this ball. Uh, it's not a great throw from Brissett into, you know, what looks like triple quadruple coverage here, obviously looking for a miracle. So you don't blame him for taking the shot. Um, but D Alford is right there to pick this off. And that's the game folks, as the Falcons will take over and just run out the clock after this. Um, just really nice play by D Alford, terrific ball hawking skills, reads the quarterback's eyes the whole way. And ends the game on the Falcons' terms. Uh, you love to see it when the when the defense can make a stop like that to end a game. Seen it a couple times now. Uh, maybe becoming a pattern. Uh, it's a pattern I'm I'm very open to. After covering a lot of blown leads with this team, of course, uh, the defense absolutely. Uh, they came to play in the red zone in particular today. They they made a couple clutch stops, and this was one of them to officially end the game. So props to the defense for how they closed out this win against Cleveland. All right, folks, there you have it. The Falcons winning up front. It's been quite a while since we've been able to utter that sentence, especially against a team as talented in the trenches as the Browns. Uh, on offense, I would say they even dominated the matchup, which, again, with the Browns missing both their starting edge rushers, missing a starting defensive tackle and Taven Bryan. It's been more of a pass rusher for them, but still, um, they were down. They're down, you know, Anthony Walker, they're... they're uh, defensive play caller as well. So this was a weakened Browns defense, but I still can't remember even against poor defenses, the Falcons ever having a performance like this in the last few years. It's been exceptionally rare to see the running game get going to this extent. And they did it all with a limited quarter L Patterson as well. Uh, Tyler Algier and, and Caleb Huntley stepping up uh, and really taking advantage of a weakened Browns defense, pounding the rock, beating the Browns at their own game, and of course the defense coming in clutch as well with a few of their own big plays. Uh, Grady Jarrett in particular I thought had a great game. Uh, several key pressures. Taquan Graham I also want to shout out. Uh, he's been he's been a force against the run, I would say. Um, and and he's made some, some plays as a pass rusher too. He's really turned into someone... That's, I think, a reliable starter for this team, which they desperately needed uh, because the de the depth on that defensive line is certainly not there at this point. Um, 
But yeah, guys, great win. Uh, always happy to celebrate a Falcons win on here. Got to enjoy these breakdowns of wins whenever we can um, because there's there's a tough stretch coming. Hopefully, we'll get some more Ws in here. But again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's Falcons film review on the Falcoholic podcast. For those of you listening on audio, you can go to our YouTube page at, uh, it's at the Falcoholic just on YouTube. Uh, if you want to see the clips of all these plays, like I said, I try to uh, describe them as best I can, but sometimes, you know, some things don't translate well to audio. But um, appreciate everyone for listening, for viewing. Uh, we will be back on Wednesday night for the Falcoholic Live on YouTube at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and we'll have our game preview podcast with Alan Sterk returning this week on Thursday, uh, coming out on Friday. If you'd like all these episodes a day earlier, you can get them by joining our Patreon page, patreon.com slash Falcoholic Live. Um, get some exclusive perks, right? Like access to our next patron Q&A session. That'll be next Monday. Uh, and of course, our eternal gratitude and a shout out and all those good things. Uh, thank you guys so much. Once again, I'm Kevin Knight at Falcoholic Kevin. Until next time here on the Falcoholic Podcast, have a great night, folks.